Part 4. Puberty. Ten years ago. In the middle of a white room with a mirror implanted on one wall next to the door, they sat in a circle. There were eight of the siblings and Dr. Childress. An empty chair sat where eight used to sit. Everyone sobbed, but one cradled nine in his arms as she used a tissue to wipe away tears from her eyes. Everyone, what happened to number eight was tragic, Dr. Childress said. But after today, we must continue with our trials. We need to leave, Four mumbled under his breath. He sat with his arms crossed, and his eyes locked on the doctor. What was that number four? Dr. Childress asked. Eight is dead because of you. Four stood up. This is all your fault. All these tests and trials, it broke her. It should be you laying in a pool of your own blood. I understand why you're angry, number four, but the test we did on your sister would not be enough to warrant self-harm. Eight had other issues going on with her that we did not predict. Liar, four yelled. He stuck his hand out to the side and his chair lifted from the ground. He pointed at the doctor, but before the chair moved, Dr. Childress pressed a button on his watch. The mechanical collar on four's neck sent shockwaves through his body, causing him and the chair to plop to the ground. The others gasped, and one went to check on four as he convulsed on the ground, groaning in pain. A moment later, the security team came in. They were two tall men in black suits. They each took four by an arm and carried him out of the room. Do you want us to put him in the hole, doctor? A guard asked. That won't be necessary, Dr. Childress said. Just take him to his room. That will be all for now, everyone. Dismissed. One followed after the security guards, but Dr. Childress stopped him. I don't know why he gets so angry, one said. He knows you only want what's best for us. It's okay, son, Dr. Childress said. His powers are getting stronger, and along with puberty, they will be affecting his emotions. One sighed, but said nothing. Get some rest, then check on him later, Dr. Childress said. Nine, I need you to come with me. Nine stopped as one left with the others. Yes, doctor, Nine said as she watched the others leave the room. The two security guards came back. We are going to try something different to see if we can activate your powers, Dr. Childress said as he tucked a strand of hair behind her ear. Gentlemen, you may proceed. Dr. Childress left Nine alone in the room with the two security guards. He watched from behind the two-way mirror as the two of them advanced on her. Four barged into One and Two's room. One, we need to talk, he said. One was doing one-handed push-ups on the floor. Almost done. Hold on. Two sprung up from his bed at Four's sudden appearance. He's done something to Nine, he said. What are you talking about? One asked. Dr. Childress, Four said. Haven't you noticed? She barely comes out of her room. Last time we ate dinner, she was quiet and had marks on her neck. Maybe she's still sick. Maybe she's still sad about eight, One said. No, Four shook his head. Two, tell him. The other day after our meeting, Two began... Dr. Childress made Nine stay behind while the rest of us went back to our rooms. Okay, what's your point? One asked. I went back to ask him something when I saw him lock the door and the security guards go in there with her. He watched as they did something to her. They hurt her, I know it, Four said. You have to check on her. You're the only one she will talk to. I don't believe it. This better not be a joke, one said. Dr. Childress would never... One, two interrupted. I probed them this morning with my trials. The restraint collar kept me from accessing some of their thoughts, and what I accessed was disturbing. They were having wild fantasies about Nine. One left the room. When he approached Nine's door, he knocked before easing it open. Nine, he said. Are you okay? 
She laid in bed, wrapped in her blankets, and curled in the fetal position. There was another bed in the room, but it was just a mattress with no blankets. One sat on the floor, resting his back against her bed. He brought his knees to his chest and wrapped his arms around them. He said nothing, but minutes later he felt a hand on his shoulder. One, Nine said, sniveling. They raped me.